Hello friends, welcome to the elite class. Today we are going to continue with the India's physiography, the Great Indian Desert part. We have already discussed the Great Indian Plateau in our previous lecture. If you have not seen that video yet, link is given in the description below. Kindly go through that video. Let's move forward to our today's topic that is the Great Indian Desert. Aravalis form this type of the desert, mm -hmm. the Thar Desert. The Great Indian Desert is the Thar Desert which is formed due to the Aravalis present in the northwestern region of the India. Desert is spread across the Rajasthan, Kutch of Gujarat and the parts of Punjab and Haryana. Let's have a look on map. As you can see in the map, this yellow part represent the Thar Desert which is spread across the Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab and the parts of Haryana as well. Now, Pakistan's Sindh part also has a part of this desert and in Pakistan, Thar Desert is called Cholistan. The part of the Thar Desert which lies in the Pakistan's territory they call it by the name of Cholistan. The vegetation present in the Thar Desert is xerophytic vegetation. Xerophytic vegetation is simply mm -hmm. where you have the uh, scanty rainfall and they are mostly the thorny plants. Uh, these kind of the plants have a huge capacity to store water for a longer period of time like cactus, acacia and all. Moving forward, the Great Indian Desert has a semi-arid part and an arid part. The semi-arid part is called the Bhagar and the arid part is called the Marusthali. You must have heard most of the times the deserts in Hindi are uh, represented by the name Marusthal. So these are actually the complete arid part of the deserts where you can see no vegetation, no population, nothing at all. The plants present in that area are acacia, eucalyptus, khejri, bear. These are all the xerophytic vegetations. Now also in the deserts you will find that the biodiversity is very very limited. The biodiversity is limited in that part. The uh, animals you will found in that part or in the desert include chinkara, black buck, peacock, the great Indian bustard and the wild ass. You include this, uh, these animals in the great Indian desert that is the thar. Moving forward, the great Indian desert is the densely populated desert of the world. You will see the number of the cities in that area like you have Jaisalmer, Bharmer, Bikaner, Ajmer, Bilwara and uh, you will also have uh, biggest shrines in the areas like Ajmer, like Sheikh Muinuddin Chisti shrine. So and in the uh, few parts of the uh, areas like Pushkar you will found the camel fair uh, are quite famous in those areas and because you will find that in the desert the ship of the desert is camel and the areas uh, like Pushkar celebrate the fair or festival of the camels and there is a fair in uh, this part of the desert every year and the most important uh, temple is of the Brahma temple you will found in the Prajapati or we can see the Brahma temple in the Pushkar area as well. So the Indira Gandhi canal, the Indira Gandhi canal is the longest irrigation canal in the world and this canal is a combination of Bias and Satluj river. Now what are the advantages of the desert? The most important advantage of the desert, particularly in the area of Rajasthan, is it is that area from where we can harness the wind as well as the solar energy. Because in the desert areas, the 
sun is uh, shining most of the hours so we can definitely harness that solar energy and we can put it to use also we can found oasis in those parts oasis are the green spots found in the desert areas and the oasis in rajasthan area are called by the name ruhi they're called by the name ruhi moving forward in the great indian desert you can found playas now what are actually the playas these are simply the flat salt pans which are uh, on the surface after evaporation and you will find the salts are found in the form of compactly packed layers uh, let's have a look at the diagram so this is actually a playa this represents a playas these are the salt pans after the evaporation of water what is left uh, that is the salt fine now talking about the sand dunes in the deserts you will see in the desert of india you will see two types of the sand dunes one is in the shape of a crescent and another is in the shape of a longitude one which is in the shape of a crescent are called the barkens and the another in the shape of longitude are called seats let's have a look in the diagram as you can see over here this is a crescent shape and this is called a barkhan you called it by name of barkhan or barkhan and the second you will see this is a longitudinal or the linear sand dunes formation and these are known as the seeps clear and you can also see mushroom rocks you know mushroom rocks look like this that is this part of the rock it has been uh, exfoliated and the exfoliation is created by the eolian erosion fine the temperature gradient which is created in the desert part makes this shape called the mushroom rocks lake sambar is a very important lake in the tar desert it is a salt lake the other lakes include the lake kharagoda lake didwanar and much more here is the dai here is the picture of the lake sambar fine so this is all for today hope you have liked the video and if you have liked the video kindly give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much